All right, guys. It's another Sunday night session. I am the editor-in-chief of the Watercraft Journal. I am Kevin Shaw, and I want to thank all of you guys who are here now, and we're going to let it just kind of spool up a little bit. I got a little bit of uh, content to talk about, and um, we also have some, inter uh, some interesting news. Uh, we already got a super chat right out of the gate, so I'm definitely going to be talking uh, about Captain Awesome, Captain Awesome's comment. And uh, I do have some interesting news about the 2022 stuff coming out. So you guys are not even caring about what today's topic is, but just want to know about 2022 stuff. Give me a minute. Um, so I got to share this. I got to share this comment or this back and forth. And I thought it was really funny. And obviously the guy on the other end didn't think it was very funny, but this was like my favorite exchange for the week is um we obviously you're coming to the watercraft journal you're getting someone's opinion and that's fine and everyone has their own opinion i understand um but when we spend a lot of time to produce video and produce content and i have the experience of writing all the personal watercraft there is and then I also talk to major athletes and racers. I talk to uh, product testers. I talk to all the manufacturers. I have a pretty good understanding of what I'm talking about when it comes to an evaluation on a personal watercraft. And I'm not really some yahoo who's fallen off the turnip truck. So anyways, um, the guy's comment was he was a C2 enthusiast and he went to the review of the 2020 Sea-Doo GTI SE 170, which we I, I spoke very highly of. And in fact, I feel very confident in my evaluation of that vehicle being watercraft of the year and very much being worthy of, of that designation. Um, there really isn't anything on the GTI SE 170 that I have any any real qualms about at all. I mean, I feel very positive about that vehicle. So, anyways, uh, one of the one of the comments that uh, is made in the review is that it simply has a superior hull design, hull shape, than the ST3. And I have a lot of information to back that up, and uh, I'm pretty uh, <laughs> I'm pretty convinced that that's the right position. And this guy felt that I was wrong. And it was funny because he jumps in and he's like, you don't know what you're talking about. You're an idiot. And the SD3 is so much better and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, all right. So I write back. I go, well, unfortunately, you're wrong on every single comment you've made. Uh, the GTI has more storage. It is better tracking in rough water. And uh, every other person that we, every person that we put on this vehicle, finds that it is a superior tracking, more predictable vehicle, or hull design, I should say, than any of the ST3s. He got irate and started, you know, made his retort. And I wrote back and I said, "You'll be hard pressed to find any professional racer, any professional athlete riding an ST3 seat, and even those." in 2018 who jumped on the brand new ST3s quickly retaliated back to their old RXP Xs. And he wrote, I was like, you won't find any professional racer, any athlete who rides this in any sort of rough water. They simply don't. And he's like, well, I'm not a professional racer. And I'm like, well, I'm not saying you're a professional racer, but I'm saying that professional racers push these vehicles to the highest end. And then he got really defensive. <laughs> and he's like, I don't know why you're coming down. I'm just sharing my opinion. And I have to laugh because I'm like, well, okay. You, you come to my review. You come to the Watercraft Journal. You trash my opinion. You trash my review of it and say I'm an idiot and all this kind of stuff. I don't cower, I don't back down, and I meet your challenge with fact, 
and I meet your challenge with a plausible, strong argument, and now you're upset that I'm not back down. And now you're saying, I don't know why you're being such a jerk about it. I'm like, well, you didn't make a good argument. My argument still stands. So I had to, I had to laugh. I had to, I, you know, I, I realize that every now and again, people are like, well, you're a jerk. You're condescending. And I'm like, okay, I, I understand. And, you know, I, I hear you out. Um, I, I don't know where I'm wrong on this one. I think maybe I just lack the bedside manner to deliver the news a little bit kinder. So um, if he happens to be listening, uh, <laughs> I was very entertained by our exchange. I thought it was funny. Um, I'm not trying to be a jerk. Uh, I might come off like that, and I apologize. That's something I've had to deal with for 43 years. Um, but uh, I promise I'll do better. <laughs> at, least, at least I'll try. Um, uh, <laughs> Michael Brand is in Montana, but he's, you're on vacation, Michael. You're on vacation. You can tune. I appreciate the super chat, buddy. Thank you very much. Um, well, let's go to the first super chat that we got because he actually he actually donated before we even started. So I wanted to get to Captain Awesome's question, and he writes: Can you please talk about twin impeller benefits over traditional impeller, or where they might have an advantage over disadvantage? Keep up the good work. It is much appreciated. Holy cow! We got a monster. Of a super chat. Um, holy cow. Please take this super chat and buy an Apple Magic Mouse. Sheesh. <laughs> yeah, this is the, the cheapo little uh, Office Depot ma- mouse that I got. Thank you, Christopher. This is That's really funny. Question is, 2020 Ultra 310X. Do you know anyone with a Riva Stage 1 or a K-Speed Stage 1? Doing stage one this winter, as I explained in the email. Um, Christopher, uh, per your email, uh, now uh, there is there is a couple guys. Uh, there's one with a, the K1 stage kit, um, and he's down in Louisiana. And in fact, uh, if I get my butt down to Louisiana, I'm going to test ride it myself. Um, but I have the math on the Riva versus the Riva stage one versus the K-Speed stage one. And the K-Speed stage one absolutely dominates. Uh, absolutely dominates. In fact, we've done articles on it and I've done videos on it. So Christopher, uh, if if you didn't click the links on the articles I sent you, I don't know how to help you more than that. Um, because that information is, is certified. That information is legit. Um, so yeah, I watched your video on that. I want to see a shootout. No. Shootouts mean nothing. Shootouts are stupid. They are. And I'll tell you why they're I'll tell you why they don't work. All right. Video shootouts typically don't do much of anything. All right. The reason why video shootouts don't work is because A, uh, most people who do heads up drag race shootouts, you don't have identical weight racers. You don't have identical fuel in the skis and oftentimes you don't have the same reaction times so those drag race videos are dumb they're dumb i think they're dumb i'm sorry uh the article on the other hand gives you top speeds and it gives you prices and it gives you everything involved in there so i don't really know what more else to do on that one uh the the articles that we've put out on the comparison between the reva and the K-Speed Stage 1 kits are pretty demonstrative. Um, I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, Fizzle, my email address is kevin.shaw at shawgroupmedia.com. That's, again, kevin.shaw at shawgroupmedia.com or info at watercraftjournal.com. That one uh, ends up going to my email address as well. Um, but I want to get back to, uh, I want to get back to Captain Awesome's question about the traditional benefit or the traditional impeller versus the 
uh, twin impellers. Um, there was a period, I would say about 10 years ago, maybe a little less, where all the all the craze was about the twin impeller setups. And the people who were really using the twin impeller setups were primarily those uh, uh, jet lift, not jet lift, what was it called? Uh, the you know jet boards, you know, they're using the pumps of the watercraft to act to levitate like a hoverboard. And a lot of those were using the twin impeller setup. And the reason why they were primarily was because the watercraft was stationary, all right? And when the watercraft is stationary, you're not having the force of incoming water help produce or generate thrust out of the nozzle, okay? Because the watercraft is stationary, even if the throttle's going bananas, all right? You're pinning the throttle and it's spinning up to five grand. Um, the watercraft really isn't moving. It's doing donuts. It's not screaming across the water surface. So that in twin impeller, that twin impeller setup was to forcibly exacerbate the processing of water through the pump and out of the nozzle. I know that there are some drag racers that are using uh, some mod. I, they like to share. They like to keep their secrets pretty close to the vest on that one. Um, there are some drag racers that are using twin impellers. Uh, if you ask me, pitch, I do not know because everyone's got their own secret sauce when it comes to that one. Um, and most guys are finding that the <clears throat> the real trick is a very high ramp, a very aggressive ramp impeller with a uh, equally aggressive stator. So as the impeller might be twisting this direction, the stators, you know, the, the blades and the stator are countering that to try to generate the most amount of thrust. Most people are not going to go to the effort of a thousand dollar custom scat track stator. Most people are not going to go through the effort of a custom a customized venturi nozzle uh most people who are looking for performance will probably buy a solus impeller off of green hulk or off of reva uh and they may maybe take the extra step to get like an adjustable cone like a lucky 13 cone um that's really as far as the majority of people go and that's where you see 90, 95, even higher percent of performance people making modifications is simply a repitched impeller or a custom impeller, maybe, maybe uh, a pump cone, and that's typically where it ends. Uh, speaking of really neat and kind of aggressive uh, impeller pitches, uh, I was at Riva last month. And Dave Bambus, were, Dave Bambus and I were in the truck, and we were talking about the RXPX. And at first, he was a little reticent because he's like, well, you know, we're really finding that, um, you know, we're really finding that the, the, factory, uh, the factory intake grate is pretty good. And I was like, dude, you got prototypes. He goes, oh, yeah, 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 I know, I know, you know, you know, we both kind of knew. And he says, well, for right now, we're telling people to hold tight with their factory intake grate because they're working on a, they're working on a few. The problem is, is that I know for a fact they have an intake grate design that, quite frankly, scrubs about a mile, if not two miles an hour off the top end, but it absolutely glues the ST3 which is the RXTX hull and the RXPX, which is the T3R hull. I mean, absolutely glues it to the water. Like it can stick to the ceiling. It, it absolutely is like the best traction enhancing intake rate they've ever whipped up. All right. And the problem is, is that there's too many knuckleheads on Facebook who are like, this thing makes me slower. I don't like it. Well, I would prefer traction over completely 
loose top top speed. I would rather stay hooked up. And you know, fat. You know, the NASCAR would say fast is loose. You know, and fast is or fast is loose and loose is loose is dangerous. And I'm of that same school. I'd rather have really tight, you know, a really tight suspension, a really locked up, you know, traction on my cars, watercraft, motorcycles, what have you. So Dave and his engineers are pretty much of the same mindset. And they're like, well, listen, hey, listen, you know, if you're out in really rough water, if you're in racing conditions, if you're out in the ocean, you want that ski to never let go. You want that pump continually loaded. And this intake rate is going to do it, but it's going to eat up a little bit of your top speed. Instead of 86, you're going to do 84, but you're never going to unhook. Well, Dave, being the mar- the forever marketer, he's like, we can't sell something that scrubs off the top end. We just can't. So right now they're they're finalizing the intake rate for the RXPX that doesn't have so much traction. It's going to have more traction than stock, way more traction than stock, m- more hookup than stock, but it's not going to be as aggressive as the one they've got. And I'm like, dude, just advertise it completely truthfully going that one's faster, this one keeps you hooked. Because the offshore racers are going to be like, I'm going to stay hooked up. Hooked up is safer. Hooked up is more consistent. Hooked up is tighter. So you try to make that conversation with people and some folks are just like, no, no, no. Mine's faster. I want to do something faster. I got to be faster. Boo hoo hoo. Okay, that's fine. Because these guys are racing on glass. You know, they're out there on like, you know, some irrigation canal <laughs> going 86 miles an hour, 88 miles an hour. Okay, cool. Hey, do it. Um, I'm not going to tell you no. But right now where Riva stands is that they're working on this intake rate that doesn't scrub speed. Um, I mean, it's they're all faster. Don't get me wrong. But they have a stage two kit that's like, listen, this thing goes 86 miles an hour with a stage two kit. We put this intake rate on we go 84 and a half or 84 and a quarter and people are going to get pissed. What do we do? So that's the balance they've got to walk. And here's the other thing that they're working on. Number two is they're working on a really cool, very, very custom uh, Solus or working with Solus um, corporate on a 14, 17 pitch impeller. Now that math comes off a little, a little wild to me. Um, yeah, I'm really kind of thrown when he was like, no, it's a 1417. I'm like, that doesn't sound right. He goes, no, that's 1417. And I was talking to Jerry Gaddis and I was talking to Greg Gaddis about it. And they're like, yeah, dude, they're like, all we've heard is rumors about this thing. It's really wild. And they're having to make all new sand molds for it. And they're having to make a bunch of really custom stuff for this, for this impeller. It should change things. And if that's the case, then I'll think a lot of RXPX guys and specifically the RXPX, RXPX guys are going to go bonkers for this new Impella. So that's the two big things coming out of Riva for the Sea Dew guys is the the new Solus Impeller and this new intake rate. When they come out, I am I don't have a hard number. Uh, my presumption is probably end of August. Um, typically and mid to end of August. So uh, that is kind of um, something really, really cool that's going on. And Scott, oh, hey, okay, I'm glad you got the stickers, Scott. <laughs> right on, we got a super chat from Scott just to say thank you for the stickers. Um, all right, so uh, anyways, um Let's see. Let me let me mark that off. So I have the I have the Riva in, uh, impeller and intake grate, and got the silly comment thing. Um, upcoming video. Uh, well, hey, I I gotta ask you guys something about. I gotta ask you guys something, and and I'm willing to do it. I thought it was really fun, but nobody cared. And I uh, last week I put up a a, a quick little video. Or no, it was about six minutes, five minutes. 
I did a video on restoring that ATC that I had, that 82 Honda 185. And nobody watched it. <laughs> like Nobody. It got like 700 views. No one watched it. And I was really surprised. I was like, man, I thought for sure. You know, I thought the jet ski guys would be like, oh, that's retro. That's cool. That's bitching. And nobody cared. So um, I've got a ton of, I got a ton of video content on stuff like that. Um, And I'm happy to put it up. But if no one, if nobody wants to see that, then I'm not really going to bother. So anyway, um, I mean, if you guys say, yeah, then, then go over and watch the, the ATC video. Because I want to make sure that people want to even see it, um, but yeah, that was really surprising about the ATC one. I thought for sure people would have wanted to watch that one, but nobody did. Um, anyway, so end of this week, we should have the uh, Carolina Ski Riders Belly Buster Ride video that should be done at the end of this week, and I'm excited about that one. That one's a fun one, and then. Um, uh, I didn't, I didn't get a lot of footage. I know Michael Brand helped me out and a couple other guys helped me out, but I didn't get a lot of footage. Got a lot of water, waterfall stuff, but didn't get much of the writing. So we'll see how that turns out. Um, all right, let's talk about 2022. Let's do it. Why not? We're already 20 minutes into this stupid thing. Uh, <laughs> okay. So what's coming out tonight? At midnight tonight is our article on half of Kawasaki's 2022 lineup. Kawasaki sent the press release out. They let it out today for half of its lineup. Well, that seems weird, doesn't it? It is weird. Uh, There's a couple reasons for it. Kawasaki USA got wise to the fact that Kawasaki Europe, which always releases things at the first week of August. They always do it early. They're not supposed to, but they do. Uh, Kawasaki Europe was going to let the cat out of the bag. And so Cow USA, because they're not connected. There is some disassociation. Um, Cow USA said, fine, we're letting it out. So what they are showing is the Ultra LX, not 310, but the Ultra LX, naturally aspirated, the SXR stand-up, and then all three of the STXs, the 160, 160X, and 160LX, they all have new colors, new decals. The color options are actually really cool. I was really surprised that they went at as bold as they did. Um, and the prices went up. Um, the only ones that... The only there was only one that did not go up three hundred dollars, and that was the STX one hundred and sixty. That went up one hundred dollars. Everything else went up three hundred dollars. Um, take that for what you will, but it's they're all going up. So here's the thing: why on earth would they just release half of it? All right, why don't release the whole thing? Well, obviously they're not ready to release the whole thing because they know demand's going to go berserk. Uh, number two is there's always fine tuning. They want to make sure that the production run is ready and the production run is not ready. They're still producing these machines. So why release the naturally aspirated skis first? Because mechanically there's nothing different. There's no new parts, just colors. All right. So that makes sense. So they can run that production run up and there's, uh, the SXR stand-up is the same colors as last year. It's just got different graphics. Um, and then the STXs are new graphics and different hoods, the hood colors. Um, they don't have to change the whole top deck of the ski or anything like that. The Ultra LX, which is a surprising one for me, is got some really nice coloring on it. It's a, like a graphite gray and a bright red. It actually looks really, really neat. The one, What's more, more surprising about the Ultra LX for me is the fact that it did not get the top deck redesign like the 310 models will. And it did not get any of the fly-by-wire control stuff. All right, it doesn't have cruise control, doesn't have all, all that nice fly-by-wire 
throttle control stuff. Slow mode, no wake mode, all that kind of jazz. So uh, that ski is kind of a dinosaur now. It's kind of a holdover. Uh, what, what it does indicate is that we are correct. The supercharged skis are getting a redesign. They're getting brakes. And those are going to be the premier models. And we're going to see brakes get trickled out over the rest of the lineup. 2023, 2024, and so forth. Um, but the premier models, the supercharged 310 models, are gonna see new are gonna see the braking system and the redesigned deck. So that's the big news. That's the thing that's exciting for that. That's coming out at midnight tonight. Uh, well, midnight my time, and that's Central Standard Time. Uh, we announced it as one p.m. or one a.m. Central uh, one a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Excuse me. Okay, so that's Cowie. I'm gonna mark that off. Tomorrow, I'm going to be riding new Yamahas. And uh, <laughs> I drive down to Atlanta, and I go to Yamaha's private dock, and I get to see the new skis. Uh, what are we expecting for the new skis? Uh, there's, there's a lot of chatter about... Uh, GP will remain the same, VX will remain the same, Superjet will remain the same, because all of those models are pretty much brand new. All right. Uh, hopefully, all uh, first year teething has been fixed. Uh, all transom plates will be correct on GPs. Hopefully, all the decals will be aligned. The quality control will be up. Uh, everything will be uh, back to normal Yamaha. Uh, what I have heard for Yamaha is a redesign, or not redesign, but a refresh. And I say refresh, I'll explain. Uh, a refresh of the, um, uh, whoops. Uh, Rick asks, how do, you, how do you change the amount on Super Chats? I like your channel. Would like to send more. Um, yeah. Uh, guys, for, for our Super Chats, uh, please let Rick know. Because I actually don't know. Uh, I didn't know there was a problem uh, when it comes to offering Super Chat. So, yeah, please do that. Um, um yeah, please please help out Rick when it comes to to super chats. Um, okay, so the FX is going to get a couple things. Uh, it's going to get a redesigned hood, fairings, possibly a new top deck. Hull will remain the same, and the reason being for the top deck is to uh, have better engine access, have the new sound system, have the new glove box that big glove box with the LED lights and the nice plugs, um, the USB port, and then with the big, uh, um, you know, the big, I still call it a cigarette lighter socket. <laughs> That's, I'm showing my age. Kids are going to be like, a cigarette lighter? Cars had cigarette lighters? Anyway. Um, and the other big thing is obviously uh, there's chat about the new, uh, a new dashboard, a new digital dash, a larger digital dash. Um, there is, um, there's some information about a fishing package. It is not a dedicated model, but a package that is available uh, and can be, a, uh, can be offered on all FX models. So you can get a naturally aspirated one, a supercharged one, a limited one, a whoop de doo whatever color is offered. So that's going to be the other thing coming out for Yamaha. So bigger dashes, sound system, bigger glove box, redesigned top deck, and a possible fishing accessory package. Um, and when all that comes to actual dedicated light, uh, I believe is the 17th. That's when my, our video and article will be ready is on the 17th. So um, that one should be able to... Uh, um, help you out. Uh, Rick, um, hey, thank you for the super chat again. I appreciate it. Uh, that's awesome. I appreciate it. Um, 
All right. So then, Sidhu. Uh, and we've talked about 2022 Sidhu's. And believe it or not, 2022 Sidhu is the one I have the least confirmation on. <laughs> um, ah. Per a conversation we had a couple weeks ago, yes, Spark is due for a refresh. Will it happen this year? I'm on the fence. I'm literally 50-50. I have not heard a thing about it. I've honestly not heard a peep about a redesigned Spark. Um Spark X, which was a, a tuned Spark, like 115 horse or 120 horse Spark, uh, not turbo, which, boy, would I love to see the ski do turbo uh, ace motor in a Spark. Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? That might get watercraft of the year just for stupid fun factor. Oh, my gosh. I forgot something for Yamaha. I forgot something for Yamaha. But let me get back to it. Uh so, um, yeah, uh, I really haven't heard much in regards to c uh, a lot, uh, a lot of people are trying to tell me that a supercharged fish pro is coming out. Um, I'd be hard pressed for that one, but again, I don't have, I mean, it's literally just an educated guess on my end. So guys, I, I really am coming up empty on hard confirmation. The one thing that I do know about is they're um, they're going to be doing a a spark style or a, a spiritual spark style uh, marine segment of pontoon boats, and they're going to be really neat, kind of modular. We talked about it before in a previous one. I actually did a video on it, so um, you guys can check that out. But there, it's a series of of small uh, small dimension, like fourteen or fifteen or sixteen foot pontoon boats that are kind of modular you can make it a center console you can make it a fishing boat or a duck blind or a cruiser you can do a bunch of stuff with that one so that should be something kind of neat it's a jet drive style pontoon boat um made with a lot of polytech made with a lot of lightweight materials so it can be towed behind uh you know you don't need a big cummins diesel or a duramax to pull it you can you know pull it with your wives suv or something like that um so that's the one thing that they're going to be talking about um everything that i have heard is that uh all of the 2022 c do stuff goes live on august 11th so that is going to be the big you know the big reveal um and i know dealerships you know dealerships have gotten in trouble for inviting yahoo friends to sit there with their phones and they're, you know, they're filming the, you know, they're filming the presentation. And, um, so anyways, that's kind of a, you know, that's going to be, that's going to be a fun thing. That's going to be a big deal. I kind of want to see, I mean, I hate to say it, but I kind of want one. If it is what it is, I kind of want to have one for a couple months because I think that'd be kind of cool. Um, and I know their their Sea-Doo's uh, Move or iMove trailer line um, that'll open them up to selling all sorts of new trailers. So that's good. Um, we'll see how that goes. But that's really it. Any talks of a two liter or a four cylinder from Sea-Doo or three hundred and thirty horsepower is people blowing smoke. They're they're wishful thinking. I, I don't know what, what else to tell you. I really don't. Um, that's just not going to happen. Um, so, anyways, guys. Uh, let's... Oh, yeah. The, the Yamaha thing. So, who's ready to see a riot? <laughs> because we are going to be witness... To an absolute, oh yeah, hey, hey, that's a good point, Michael. Um, I was told by a friend that works at a dealer that CDU 2022 prices will go up 15%. Um, no. 10%? Maybe. 5%? Definitely. Um, 
I can't give you a percentile, but it's going to go up. GTX Limited 300, easily 20 grand. Easily. They're all going up. Can I tell you 15%? No, I can't tell you. I can't tell you the percentages or percentiles. But I am going to tell you that, heck yeah, everything's going up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going up big time. I got like a, it's a dog hair. Okay. I have a blue healer that sheds like an exploding squirrel. I've never owned a dog that shed like this. Okay. Um, but the Yamaha thing, this one scares me. This one, if it's true, I'm spooked. Rumor is, I don't have much on this. They're taking the EXR and either they're replacing the name of the EXR or it's going to be a version of the EXR that has foot wedges like a, like a Spark Trix, has an extended, uh, you know, extended trim range like a Spark so it can do wheelies like a Spark. And they're going to call it the Wave Blaster. Wave Blaster fans are going to lose their minds. Wave Blaster guys, like you know, B one guys, they're gonna they're they're gonna burn down Kennesaw. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's like you know what it reminds me of. It's like the new Chevy Blazer. Have you guys seen the Chevy Blazer? <laughs> The, it's like a, you know, it's like, what is it? Like a, a short traverse? Yeah. Chevy Blazer guys lost their minds when Chevrolet brought the Blazer back and they made it like a CUV. And so, yeah. Um, if, if that happens, I think they're going to piss off a lot of dudes. Um, think Dodge Dart. You know, Steve, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. All right, front-wheel drive, four-door, Dodge Dart. I get it. Um, have, having built two of them, uh, <laughs> uh, if Dodge had the temerity to build an all-wheel drive turbo Dart, like they did the Neon, like they did with Travis Pastrana. Travis Pastrana actually raced. Uh, he had rally raced. An all-wheel drive, turbocharged, two-liter or two-point-two liter, uh, Dodge Dart. It was fast. He did a lot of really cool videos with it. Um, if if Dodge had made an all-wheel drive turbo Dart, I think it would have saved that spiritually. I think it would have saved that car, but they didn't, and it died for good reason. All right, so. That's the one thing is the Wave Blaster, and that's why I forgot to bring it up because it just makes my heart hurt. Um, the, I, have, I have no pictures of anything. I Honestly, hand to God, I have no pictures of any of the new Yamaha stuff. Um, I haven't seen anything. I haven't gotten it. This is, it's literally hearsay from guys in Georgia, guy, I mean, dealers from media reps, um, it's from all over the planet, but man, yeah, that one, uh, I mean, the FX changes are cool and we're not even talking about today's subject, are we? We're 40 minutes into this and I've just been rambling. <laughs> it's terrible. Um, uh, yeah, I'll be with Jerry and Greg and me are the three people who are going to be writing the new the new skis this week. So, yeah. Jerry and I are both under the, the same non-disclosure, so we can't show you pictures on Monday or Tuesday of anything. We have to wait until the non-disclosure because I want to be invited back. I, I like working with Yamaha. They're nice guys. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's uh, that's going to be an interesting one. If they make it, if they make a Trix and a Fish Pro, I think a lot of the Sea Dew guys are going to rub Yamaha's nose in it. I, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to look bad. 
Uh, people are just going to be like, wow, dude, way to think creatively. You know, I mean, it's, you know, it's the way it kind of goes, unfortunately. And I mean, I don't know what to tell you on that one. So basically, we were supposed to talk about how to keep your impellers healthy and your wear rings healthy. And considering I'm 40 minutes into this already, <laughs> we're going to do it really quick. Stop operating your skis in shallow water. Stop it. Stop. Just stop it. Just stop. If you would stop doing that, you wouldn't have any problems. Shallow water is what's sucking up. And I'm talking mainly rocks. I'm talking mainly rocks. Um, where I ride, where I live, got a lot of wood. We got a lot of wood debris. We got timber in the in the water. And it, sometimes it's two to three feet under the water. And you don't even know it until you hit it. So sometimes you get wood chips and you get chunks of wood, you get little bits of debris and that gums up, you know, that'll stick in the impeller right on the trailing edge and jam right into the soft plastic wear ring of the sea -Doo. And now you got, you know, now you got an impeller that won't spin. Okay, great. What do you do? So, and a lot of you guys who ride in grassier areas, you're going to get a lot of weed. You're going to get a lot of grass, you know, cooney grass that'll wrap around the, uh, the, uh, the impeller shaft. It'll gum up the impeller, you know, gum up the stator. Um, but for the majority of people, all right, for the majority of people who ride, they typically end up on a beach or on a shore, all right, lake shore, river, sh river banks, and it's grittier. It's more rock. It's more gravel. And nine times out of ten, you guys are firing up skis because you don't want to get wet. I don't want to get my feet wet. I don't want to be crotch deep in the water. Ooh, it's going to make my it's going to make my privates hurt. Oh my goodness, I don't want to do it. Well, here's the problem. I I've been on rides with really smart people, really great people, people I respect, and they'll push their ski off, climb up the back, and they'll fire the ski up with a foot and a half of water underneath them. And they'll, they won't even hit the gas. They'll idle out. It doesn't matter because you've got a swill of sediment kicking up. All right. And then you fire up the ski that's producing thrust. And a lot of times Yamahas and Cowies, when you fire them up, they have a little bit of a pulse. They go, Vroom! they jump up a little bit in RPM. They don't start off at a low RPM. <laughs> so what you're saying is don't ride it in Florida besides the open ocean <laughs> no I'm saying pushing the damn thing out push it out push it out now I mean grass is one thing all right grass and weeds is one thing let's let's talk about the hard debris first all right um so oh, I, what actually is cavitation keep meaning to search watercraft I haven't described, I haven't detailed what it, what cavitation is. Um, oh, gosh. Philly on Delaware River. We have trash. Oh, gosh. Ugh, don't get in the water. Um, if you guys... Yeah. Okay, we got Greg Gaddis here. Look at Greg Gaddis is here, and Green Hill Garage just chimed in. Kevin, <laughs> last weekend at the beach, I witnessed a sea owner revving the hell out of his ski on the beach to dig it out of a hole. After offering assistance and advice, he, quote, knew what he was doing. Don't help these people. Let Darwin take care of them. All I have to say is make sure you're not at the same launch ramp parking lot when you leave and they leave. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, Greg. Oh. And you know what's sad is that you're not the first. I, I've, I haven't encountered someone like that. I haven't encountered someone like that. But I have encountered some really dumb things before. And I think we all have. I think everyone can share a story of like, let me tell you the dumbest person I've encountered. Uh, 
but uh, <clears throat> the the hard thing is is people ask for advice. Okay, this is my favorite meme. I'll share my favorite meme. <clears throat> and I was talking to Jerry Gaddis about this a couple of years ago. Was an ask hole. <laughs> An ask hole, ask with a K, ask hole. And that is someone who asks for your advice and then promptly does the exact opposite. <laughs> and I get a lot of ask holes. <laughs> now, my, um, mind you, I might be an A hole at the end of it, but in my response, but I get a lot of ask holes. Guys saying, well, hey, how do I make my ski faster? What should I buy? What do you. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? I'll happily I'll happily give you any input that I can share. If I have if I don't have an answer, I will tell you I'm like, "Hey man, I'm really sorry. I literally can't comment on it." Uh similar to what I was saying about the the twin impeller setups. I'm like, "This is what I know, which isn't much." Um but uh to that effect, I'll always happily happily want to help out and give any sort of input. But if you argue with me about my advice, then we're kind of running in the circles here. <laughs> so um, getting back to it is I strongly, strongly suggest pushing your ski out minimum three feet. Minimum three feet. Now, I get it. If you're in an area, like you said, brackish water with snakes and gators, um, and you stop, I, I'm saying in most, <clears throat> if let, let's clarify here. Let's clarify. If you're going to stop and socialize, go on the beach and foof around and have a picnic, and you're about ready and you're done having your little fun time, at the sandbar or the riverbank or wherever you might be, and you're out and you're not on your ski, push the ski out three to four feet deep. Just do that. Now, if you stop somewhere, um, oh, hey, guys, I just got an alert saying chat is disconnected. Please wait while we reconnect you. Um, if, if I'm still live and you guys can hear me, please let me know. I think we had this last week. I have no idea, no idea why it's happening again. Um, YouTube might not like me, but, um, so please let me know if, if I'm coming in. Okay. All right. All right. We're up again. We're up again. Okay, cool. Thank you. <laughs> we did it again. <laughs> hey, while we're taking a, while we're taking a, a, a one second break, if you haven't already, we got 117 viewers here. We've only got 40 likes. There's no reason, unless you guys hate my guts, uh, please give this video a thumbs up, all right? We really want to get the algorithm going, and we really want to get, you know, the, the YouTube popularity contest up and rolling. So if we can get those thumbs up, take a second, hit the thumbs up that you like the video. Um, I'd like to see at least 100 since we have 116, 117 people here. So, uh, yeah, that would be great. Um, Roger writes, see, we got a super chat from Roger just bought my first watercraft, the GTX 230, and your videos were so helpful. Thank you. Well, I'm happy you got it, Roger. I'm happy that you're happy with your ski. Please make sure to, um, follow the proper, pro uh, the proper break in process. And I think you'll absolutely love it. Maintain your ski. If you can store it out of the sunshine, definitely get a cover for it because the, the plastics on the sea dews are pretty UV sensitive and you want to keep that one looking really, really nice. Um, what assholes dislike to this? <laughs> I've always got guys who hate this one. I, I always get guys who get, I, I honestly could put up three minutes of, of puppies playing and they give it a thumbs down. It doesn't matter. They, they just are angry Grinches. So, oh well. But yeah, guys, if we can get the thumbs up on this video, I really appreciate it. Okay, so getting back to it. Um... Rocks, debris, pieces of wood that get stuck in the impeller, stuck in the wear ring. Um, <clears throat> the best solution I can give for that, and I mean, I've been in a lot of scenarios where it's like we've had to pull, we've had to drag the ski up the beach, tilt it on its side, 
and try to fish stuff out of the out of the impeller. We've had to put it on the trailer, hook up the you know hook up the the front winch, and then lock it up while it's hanging off the edge while you're precariously underneath a dripping wet ski, and then you're sticking a foot long screwdriver in there trying to you know pop things loose. Um, I wish, and I've talked to a lot of people, and I, I've always asked them, like, what is your ideal pump tool? And I've encountered a lot of people who have, um, it's a small harbor freight tool. It's about two, eh, it's less than two feet long. It's about a foot and a half long. It's about 16 to 18 inches long. And it's got a pointed end, like a, like, you know, it's a, it's a piece of round stock steel. And it's got a, a tapered pointed end at one end. And then at the other end, it's got a small pry bar hook. Not a full hook, but almost like a uh, like a crowbar hook at the end. And a lot of guys who do a lot of river and a lot of uh, debris heavy shallow areas, that's been the uh, a clothes hanger works pretty good for weeds. But that tool has been the most impressive for me, especially when it comes to rocks and pieces of wood getting wedged in the impeller and wedged into the stator. Uh, for weeds, uh, I've seen, believe it or not, I've seen two guys at different occasions using legitimate meat hooks, like wood handle, meat hook through the fingers, with an actual hook, you know, it's a sharp, and they go in there through the through the intake grate and start pulling out seaweed and kelp and big ragweed, uh, you know, big chunks of weed, you know, cooney grass weed out of it. So that meat hook, and I think sharp as hell. But boy, the, I've seen some really good success out of both those tools. And I know some people will have other tools that they like that they've been using, and that's great. I'm all for suggestions. And I'm sure everyone here is up for a suggestion. So if you got like a secret tool that you've been using and is easy for someone to pick up, I'm all for that too. Um, yes, officer, it's my weed hook. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're going to end up looking like the candy man with that damn thing. But uh, yeah, it's... Uh, uh, that That has been a pretty successful tool as well. I actually toyed with the idea of developing my own tool to sell. Um, it didn't really seem, I mean, because I haven't found one that I think is perfect, I don't want to really put my name on it. Um, so that's been kind of my problem is, is finding a tool that just really does it all. Uh, but that's one of the hardest things. I'll tell you a funny, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, I did the St. John's River with a group a few years back and all the water level was low and all of us got grass long three foot strands of this very durable grass caught into our impellers uh, into the uh, wrapped, wrapped around the shafts gummed up the impeller I mean it was everywhere and the group I was with was predominantly older I mean I was I mean this is a few years ago so I was on average 15, 20 years younger than most people on this ride. And no one, no one was willing to jump into the water because they're like, oh, there's gators and oh my gosh, and what are we going to do? But I'm talking at least 10 people were stuck. I mean, stuck, stuck. And it, we, were, we were in a bad situation. Now, thankfully, we had throttled through the really shallow area where the grass was. We were in deeper water, but everyone was gummed up. And there were some people were overheating. It was bad. So I looked at the ride leader and I said, well, I got a crazy idea. I'm going to jump in, but I want, uh, <laughs> I'm going to jump in. I'm going to start pulling grass out of everyone's intake grates. I need you to do two things. I said, make sure that everyone's lanyards are disconnected. And I need you literally running donuts around me so that we're making enough noise and enough uh, and disturbing the water enough that nothing will come near me because they wouldn't gators wouldn't come near me snakes wouldn't come near me as a jet ski is running doing donuts around me it chopped up the water like nut you know it made a mess but i was able to go and we i literally did i literally made a drive-through of people 
come in and they would idle in, kill the engine, pull the lanyard. I made sure their lanyard was in their hand. And I stick my hand up in their in their pumps and start pulling these weeds out. And there was easily eight to ten skis that I did that with the um with the the leader of the ride doing donuts around me. And I mean, I, I had a guy email me about that like last week or last week or two weeks ago. It was really funny. He was like, he's like, dude, I remember when you did that. That was so cool. <laughs> so I thought that was really funny. Um but yeah, for really grassy areas and with low uh, low level, low water level areas, you're gonna suck up some grass or some weeds. I always joke that you're you know you're chopping up coleslaw. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's, it sounds like something Florida would have to do. A wise choice to not get bit or pulled down by a scaly a scaly lizard. Yeah, yeah, and, but um. Yeah, it, it it's one of those maintenance things. It's one of those it's one of those things that I mean, I've I've sucked up wood, I've sucked up chunks of rope. Um, oh man, I got stuck by a by a grocery bag one time. Grocery bag absolutely wadded up around the impeller, and I had to limp it in with the temperature light getting mad at me. And I jumped in the water, fished out as much as I could. That got me up to about 10 miles an hour. I brought it in to the shore and I had to, and I had my daughter with me. We had to put, we had to hold it up as best as we could. She's, she, my kids are all little, so she was of no help, but I was holding up the ski as, as high as I could and sticking my hand in. And finally I realized I go, Hey, she's got little hands. So I grabbed it and pressed it up. And I was like, it's not going to fall on you. It, it's not going to fall on you. You need to get your hand in there and pull the plastic out. And she did. She got her hand in there, pulled the plastic out. So maybe I recommend going with little kids with tiny little hands. Um, <laughs> flat razor blade in a toolkit. Yeah. Um, a lot of those razor blade scrapers that you use for body work, that's a good one too. I have seen that. Um, I've seen very long needle nose pliers. Uh, so it just really depends on where you regularly ride, but, uh, yeah, that's, uh, does junk being sucked up happen a lot or rare occasion? Um, it depends on how aware you are of where you're riding. Pay attention to the water in front of you. Just be really, really attentive. Have your head on a swivel. Um, I'll tell you, I've been surprised by submerged trees and submerged logs. I really have. Um, it just depends on where you can be. Oh, dude, fishing line. Yeah, fishing line, fishing line really requires some really sharp scissors or some uh, uh, some cutting tools like dikes, you know, wire cutters, things like that. Um, okay, so the best argument that I have found for putting in a stainless steel wear uh, wear ring on a sea doo obviously besides performance outside of performance, why a casual person, even with a naturally aspirated ski may want to consider putting in a stainless steel sleeve is predominantly because of where they ride. And if they're sucking up a lot of debris and the reason why is because more than a pla well, a plastic wear ring is soft. And the idea why SeaDoo has the plastic wear ring is that they're considering it a wear item and that similar to the brake pads on your car, you're going to want to regularly change it out. And the wear ring is designed, um, the wear ring that is, that the, the design or the purpose of the wear ring is supposed to take the damage of sucking up debris rather than the impeller. But what you end up finding is that because of the softness of the wear ring, say a small rock or a piece of wood gets sucked up into the impeller and it can't make its way past the impeller, it's going to dig it, dig a groove or dig a, 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 a chunk or a groove, I, groove is the right word, dig a groove into the wear ring and really embed itself into the wear ring and really jam the impeller. And so 
it's a great idea on paper, but in practice, it, it may do more harm than good. So, and that's may, I'm not saying definitively, uh, because I have had really good, I've had really good experiences with plastic wear rings and I've had some bad ones. So it's hit or miss. Uh, oh, we got, we got a sewer chat. Okay. Jonathan writes 83 mile per hour, Brian Baldwin ski road at Lake Norman. He had pieces in foot wells to keep your feet locked in. What's the name of these and where can I find them? Hydroturf. Hydroturf does make them. They're the ones that he's using are from Hydroturf. Uh, they're literally just foam blocks or what you might call a foot wedge. And you can order them. Uh, now, the ones Brian had, he doubled them up. He used rubber contact cement and he doubled them up so they were deeper. So you were really, really locked in. When I used foam wood, uh, foam foot wedges, excuse me, I only used one instead of two on each side. He's got doubles. I use singles because I would I would put my feet, my heel up against the inside and my toes on the outside. So you're kind of like this. You're kind of splay footed. And that's what's keeping your toes in. And when I raced offshore, that would keep me from my feet <laughs> leaving the tray. <laughs> my feet wouldn't leave the, the, the foot wells. Um, so those are those are pretty good, especially if you're in rough water and you find that you're bouncing out and your feet are flying out. That's a good thing to to consider, and they're cheap. Um, all right, so yeah, I want to talk about the wear ring, plastic wear ring, and the impeller situation. Um, honestly, it just comes down to shallow water. It really does. It comes down to shallow water. And for a lot of you guys who are in less than hospitable waters, like the Delaware or the Hudson or things like that, um, where you, well, I'll tell you what, the Mississippi River is gnarly. I mean, I, I oh, hey, I got a fun one for you. I saw a dead cow floating down the Mississippi. I saw four legs sticking straight up. Dead cow. Dead cow floating down the Mississippi. Mississippi's gnarly. <laughs> the Mississippi's pretty dang gnarly. So uh, basically pay attention to the water. Pay attention to your surroundings. Try to avoid it if you can. Um, then by all means, carry some sort of tools, something with some reach to get inside. And not, not at all, John. <laughs> that thing probably would have exploded if I... Got if I touched it, it, it wouldn't have. Yeah, it would have gone <laughs> like a like a spoiled meat pinata. Uh, I, I'm not touching that thing. Um, so yeah, I really got to say the best advice I can give is never start your ski in less than three feet of water, um, unless you're on a concrete boat ramp that doesn't have anything on it. Which I've never seen a clean boat ramp besides some new ones. Um, Number two, no, yeah, don't launch in shallow water or don't start up your engine in shallow water. Push it out three three feet minimum. And carry, and number uh, and number four, or number th I don't know what number I'm on. I'm fried. Uh, <laughs> uh, carry something with some reach to be able to fish out anything that's in your impeller, anything that's in your pump. Um, and... Yeah, if you're if you kind of take the whole Boy Scout, you know, be prepared mindset, you'll be in good shape. Um, but you really, really need to pay attention to where you're riding and be cognizant that shallow water is is really dangerous on the on the pump. Um, and with sea dews, another thing is especially sandy areas. That sand when it swills up when it turns into this big you know cloudy mess. That sandy water, that that really you know, you know, really dusty, silty, sandy water, that doesn't just go through the pump. It also goes forward, up the impeller, and into your carbon seal. And when you start seeing carbon seal failure, premature carbon seal failure, a lot of times it's because it's impregnated with a lot of sand and grit. So again. 
be aware of your machine and be aware of how to maintain it and keep it happy. Um, oh, we got a super chat from Grant. Grant, what are your thoughts on a blow-off valve for the GTX 300 2021? Is it worth the money? If so, Fizzle or Reva? Um, well, Reva buys the teal. Uh, Fizzle, I think Fizzle uses teal as well. Uh, here's the question, Grant, is are you making extra boost? Are you producing more than the factory boost levels, which I think max out at like less than nine PSI? Um, if, okay, yeah, Fizzle's got four options. Okay. Um, but if you're not making more than factory boost, you don't need it. You don't. Because the factory, the factory setup is dialed for that level of boost and it can scrub it off, and you'll be fine. It, it's designed to scrub off extra boost. But if you're making more boost, you got a new impeller wheel in there. You know, it, you've you know you've really upped. You know, you might have milled your heads. You got to have you know you got to have higher compression or more boost. Then, by all means, you might want to consider a blow off valve. But having a cold air intake on your on your supercharger and a tune. You're not making more boost. You're making a colder, denser charge, but you're not making more PSI. You just got a more efficient burn. So I typically, yeah, I typically don't suggest a big blow-off valve unless you're unless you've really gone in, you've done like a, an X or a double X supercharger, and you're making just monster, monster boost. Otherwise, Grant, no, nah, you're good, dude. You're good. Um, I don't mean to cost Fizzle or or Dean Steam or Reva a sale, but put your money elsewhere. If you're going to spend some money, put the money elsewhere. Okay, guys, I'm kind of done with my little spiel. I didn't have much for this one, so let's uh, do my my uh, um, my best uh, weekend update. You know, what's uh, what's Dennis's last name? Miller, Dennis Miller. He used to do this at the end of every show. Huh. We'll answer some questions. If we got some more Super Chats, you guys get to the front of the line. Um, if you like what we do, you can uh, do a Super Chat donation. If you like what we do and want to support us, and you don't want to do Super Chat, or you don't have a Google account, you can do PayPal to my email address, kevin.shaw at shawgroupmedia.com. You can buy one of our shirts at the link at the top. You can buy our auxiliary fuel system kit and add 65% more fuel capacity to your Yamaha. Um, if you have a Kawasaki, you can add, it works on the Kawasaki. And if you have a 2012 and older SeaDo, it'll also work on your SeaDo. But uh, other than that, I'll scroll back to the top and I'll start answering some questions and we'll go from there. Okay, I answered Captain Awesome. So Captain Awesome is satisfied. Uh, My True Passion writes, are you going to talk about the release of the 22 c dues? I already did. Uh, the Dank Asian. <laughs> All right. Just got a GTI SE 170 and it's just as great as you said. But what kind of neoprene PDFs do you recommend? Mine or moldy? Um, Dank Asian. <laughs> Sorry, that's outstanding. Um, I have found that the single best fitting, most comfortable neoprene vests are from Slippery. All right. They are owned by Thor. And, you know, Thor Motorcycle Equipment, and they are owned by Parts Unlimited, big major uh, sports equipment manufacturer. Uh, Slippery has had some hang-ups when it's, it came to its 2021 lineup. I believe they're in stores and they're taking orders now. You can order it from their website. Uh, they have distributors. And you can order them from there. We will actually be giving away a... Um, we'll be giving away a slippery life vest when we hit 15,000 subscribers and we're nearly there. We're nearly at 15,000 subscribers. And 
it won't be to our 15,000th. It will be to everyone who's a subscriber. Uh, we will do a random. Unfortunately, it will have to be to someone within the lower 48 states. Slippery is not going to pay to send it to New Zealand. So unfortunately, with things as they are, with Canada's border to the U.S. being closed, uh, shipping across the Canadian border is absurd. Um because I tried to buy a car last, uh, I tried to buy a car last week, and getting it across the border was eight hundred dollars, which was almost the cost of the car. So I actually, I actually passed on the car. I'm kind of bummed about it. Um, but all right, so moving on. But you make a good jerk. I think of the Steve Martin version of the jerk. You know, like somebody hates these cans. All right. Um, all right. I want to see a shootout. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, hey, Kevin, advise people if they ever want to get a GP to have a seatbelt installed and wear a cuff. Um, I try to talk people out of Yamaha GPs. And that sounds silly. And I'm sure I'll get like a nasty email from Yamaha going like, what's your, what's your problem? But I try to put people on more VXHOs than I do GPs. And the reason being is that most people do not know what they're getting into. Most people. I'm talking like over 50%. Most people don't know what kind of ski they're getting into. They really don't. And I'm not trying to be condescending. I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm not trying to be mean about this. But people just go, oh, I want something fun and sporty. Well, I'll tell you what, man. There ain't nothing more fun or sporty than a GP SVHO. But here's the kicker. The GP 1800, 1800R SVHO is a stripped-down rocket ship hot rod. And I know your lizard brain right now is going, that sounds awesome. I want that. I want that thing. But after about five hours of riding, you're like, I'm exhausted. This thing is rattling my fillings loose. Because it is lightweight. It doesn't absorb any of the bumps and chatter and chines. It doesn't absorb that. It's not designed to. It's designed to be the fastest thing possible so that Chris McCluggage can win world championships. That's what it's designed for. So a lot of people jump into this thing thinking it's like they're it's like they're grocery shopping while hungry, you know, they're, they're ordering food with their eyes or hunting. You know, and it's like, dude, you got way more than you need. Honestly, a VX cruiser HO, HO has got 180 horse it's pump gas. It's got the sporty style hull, same hull as a GP, but it's made out of the thicker nano Excel one. Great. So it absorbs more. It's cushier. It's more comfortable. Your wife's going to like it. The kids are safe on it. It's not something that's going to absolutely be insane that everyone goes, yeah, dad rides it like four times a year. It's fast as snot, but even he gets worn out on it. And that's what happens. I'm telling you, guys, the best advice that I give people right now toward, you know, as we are in, nearing the end of the season and they say, I want a new ski, I go, good. Wait for the 2022s to come out. And they go, well, I don't want a 22. I go, no, 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 I understand. Wait for the 22s to come out. And all these guys who bought a GP not knowing what they were getting or bought an FX SVHO not knowing what they were getting are going to return those or trade those in on something cushier and easier to ride. And you can snatch up their trade-in for a song. And it's only going to have 14 hours on it. And I'm telling you, Guys do that, and they're like, "Dude, I got this. I got this ski for a song." I'm like, "I know you did. I know you did because they did it last year, and they did it the year before. It's what happens every year." So, I I hate to say I hate to say it, John West, but you're entirely right. <laughs> All right, KG writes, Kevin, I just take I I've just taken delivery of a 2021 GP 1800R SHO. It, it's been hot. Pressure builds in my gas tank. So I've left the cap loose to help relieve pressure. Should I do this? Thanks, man. Um, well, the gas tank is vented. So it shouldn't have to do that. Now, I know when you unscrew the gas cap, it goes, 
it'll it'll push the cap into your hand. I understand that. There is actual gas pressure. There is actual pressure in the gas tank, but the gas tank does have its own atmospheric breather. It does have a relief breather. Okay. My biggest suggestion: get your ski covered. Get it out of the sun if you can. Um, but definitely put a, a ski cover over it. Um, and it, I know it's hot. It's been blazes. But keep it covered. But don't leave the gas cap off. Because what happens when you leave the gas cap off is moisture can collect. And now you've got moisture in your filler neck, on the inside of your gas cap, and in the gas tank. And now you've got effectively worse than 10% ethanol. All right. You've got a lot of moisture inside of your, of your fuel system. Don't do that. The atmospheric breather has a one-way valve in it. Won't let moisture in, but will let air pressure out. All right. Uh, do, 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 do. All right. Scott writes, thanks. My new FX front compartment leaks water bad. Any suggestions on how, on how to seal it better? Well, um, my first suggestion is to make sure that the latch... When I say the latch is tight, I don't mean that it, it latches and connects. What I want you to do is there's two screws holding the, the latch on. And you can, you can back those off, not all the way, but back them out, and you can move that latch. And if you do that, you might be able to put preload on the hood. All right? And if you can put that preload tension on... That might seal the gasket better. Now, the other suggestion I can make is actually go to an auto parts store and get actual weather stripping, you know, weather stripping gasket. Uh, not gasket maker, not the goo that comes out in the tube. I'm talking actual weather stripping that has like 3M style adhesive on one side. And you can get this stuff, peel the red adhesive tape off and actually line the lip of your storage compartment and that will do you even better. So try that one out. All right. Eric writes, Hey, Kevin, love the content. I picked up a VX HO. My top speed is only reaching 53 at 6,000 RPM acceleration on normal mode and top speed set to high. Have you heard anyone else? Yes. It's the speed control. It's the speed control. It's the speed control. Deactivate speed control. Deactivate it. Turn it off. It's, it's a gimmick. It doesn't work. It's restricting you. Speed control. Turn it off. Get rid of it. If, if, if it was a physical piece of equipment, I would tell you to disconnect it and pull it out of your ski. The speed control sucks. It does. I, 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 I encountered it on the GP on test day, on the day that I rode that ski. I'm like, this, this thing's a dog. It only does like 60 miles an hour. They're like, no, it works great. I go, no, it's crap. And I had the stupid cornering controller thing on, and that activated speed control. Speed control is an absolute anchor. Turn it off. Never use it again, unless you're putting your kids on there, and you're going to let Junior ride around at you know 30 miles an hour. All right. Uh, can you say your email again for me? I saw someone else ask it. Kevin.shaw at shawgroupmedia.com. All right. Uh, due to Captain Awesome, thank you for the response. I raced Pro-Am stock with a, two, with a 2017 RXPX. Looking for any advantage I can find. Uh, thank you again. Well, Pro-Am stock is definitely not going to let you run dual impellers. Um, in fact, does stock even let you change impellers? Does Pro Stock let you uh, change impellers? I'm not sure. Depends on the sanctioning body. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Christopher writes, Dude, my uncle had one of those three-wheelers. I saw it come up on my feed today. Didn't watch yet because we just got back from the lake. Well, please watch it. If you guys really do like that ATC video, let me know. Uh, give it a like and leave a comment. Because otherwise, I'm not really, I'm not going to, I like doing that kind of stuff, but I just didn't know if anyone liked it. Speaking of which, we're, we got 121 people follow or watching this right now. 
If we could get the likes to 100, that'd be awesome, guys. Just hit the like button. Just push the little like button. Push it. Push. Push the button. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Do, 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 do. All right. Let's see here. Okay, so Pete writes, FX SVHO versus GP1800R SVHO. Are they more similar or different than each other? Would the GP be a terrible cruiser and the FX just not as sporty? Or are they closer to each other? Um, you're talking hull designs. Hull design, hull design, hull design. All right. Both skis are very lightweight. There's very reduced insulation. They're not going to absorb a lot of bumps. They're not going to absorb a lot of chatter. You're going to feel it up through your feet, through your butt, through your hands. You're going to feel it on both skis. The GP more so than the FX. All right? That's number one. Number two is that the FX is, quite frankly, the FX took a lot of design cues from the GP. The GP is sportier. It's looser. It darts. No. No. It doesn't. It tracks really good, but you're going to react more to the surface of the water more than the FX. So if you're looking at doing long distance riding, if you're looking at doing a long ride, hour, two, three, four, five, ten hour ride, the FX is a better choice. GP is going to be a little bit more of a wrestling match. GP, again, the design and the purpose for the GP was closed course, buoy course, offshore course racing. That's what it's designed to do. That's what they built it to do. Everyone else who buys one is pretending to be a racer. All right. Okay. Dooby 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 doo. Let's see what else we got. <laughs> uh, all right. KG writes You asked that I follow up on my question regarding late. 2012 Kawasaki STX 15F. No problem with starter. Wires and hoses were cooked and maybe a flat spot somewhere. Dealer said it was salvaged. Ooh, yikes. That sucks. That's a lot of work. All right. Uh, Jonathan writes. Oh, that was his question. His question was about the foot wedges. All right. Uh, Brian Baldwin, not Kevin Baldwin. <laughs> um, yeah, the HydroTurf. Get him through HydroTurf. Yeah, tell them Kevin. Tell them the watercraft. Tell them the watercraft journal sent you, please. They advertise with us. It'd be nice that they hear. Hey, listen, I heard about them through the watercraft journal. All right. Uh, do 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 do. Yeah, the new blazer. You mean reskin traverse? Yeah, it's a uh, the new Bronco full size. Did a re-release right. Uh, I saw the little one. Now, isn't the full size one? Is it the full size one that's based on the F one fifty, and the small one is based on the Flex? I saw a small one, and I was like, "Ugh, ugh!" It was not. I was not a fan. Um, uh, yeah, Jonathan, he's right. Greg's RXPX wear ring had a little scuff on plastic, and they don't abuse their skis. I don't know. I saw. I saw what he does at the sandbar. He ain't perfect either. We pulled it to this. I pulled it to the sandbar three days in a row with that kid. He launched that damn thing freaking in two feet of water. It's because he has girlfriend on there and she didn't want to paddle out. Um, uh, would you say cavitation wears the wear rings up also? Not really. I mean, your cavitation's got to be gnarly, and I don't think your cavitation's that bad. Um, it no. I really wouldn't. I can see now, I'll tell you what, Jonathan. I could tell you that a very distressed or very damaged wearing could cause more cavitation than anything. And so having a smooth bore, a really nice, clean, unmarred wearing, and a very clean, unmarred prop, I said prop, <gasps> impeller, um, would account for less or reduced cavitation. Um, 
All right. What actually is cavitation? All right. Let's talk. Let's talk. Oh my gosh, it's an hour and twenty five in here. All right. So cavitation is. There's a there's a couple effects of cavitation, but what ca what causes or what is cavitation is water. Water can only sustain so much force before it its molecular bonds start to break apart and it becomes it starts to gaseate. Your ga gaseate is that the word gas to become gas. Gastrophies? I don't know. Uh, how would you con how would you conjugate that? But it <laughs> now I'm having a brain fart. Um, at the point that water has so much turbulence and so much force being put on it that it begins to break apart. It's bubbling up. It's turning into a gas, or it's turning. You know, it's it's losing its structure. Okay. So what happens is that that cavitate and then in that process you start to get you um energy become it starts to uh energy actually starts to the physics of it starts to break off starts to starts to scuff off so you start getting vibrations you're getting harmonics all right so you're really starting to lose the integrity of the of the water going through the pump and becoming thrust the integrity of that water is breaking apart. Is it, hopefully, I haven't lost anyone on that one. So the best way to thwart cavitation is trying to maintain the flow or the current of that water and to keep it as solid and consistent so that it doesn't break apart and become this foamy, bubbly, garbage mess that's bouncing off, you know, sound waves. So like a top loader intake rate. Well, why is a top loader intake great for cavitation? Because that deep snow shovel of a blade is taking that running water, bringing it up the top, uh, the top of that blade and pushing that water up onto the top of the pump tunnel. So the majority of your, of, of that, um, high speed high velocity water that's still maintaining hasn't lost integrity hits the top of the of the pump and the top of the impeller and is processed through the stator and through the venturi and out of the nozzle so why there's so much effort put into like a multi vein stator a multi vein pump is trying to reduce the cavitation the breaking apart of that thrust and to and to focus it to calm and condense it into thrust out the back. So that's why, like, if you look up like a scat track and a scat track, not well. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, Impro the guy, one of the head engineers for scat track left and bought Impros, and a lot of that secret, you know, secret business acumen went over to Impros. Either way, Scatrack and Impros, Solus, they're all working at trying to maintain the most amount of traction without breaking up the water and keeping that water um, consistent and the integrity of that water coming through so that it maintains consistent thrust. And that's really your the big effort. Um, like the FZRs, the Yamaha FZR had that big inlet, had that giant, giant pump inlet. Well, the problem was that the water was slamming into that impeller and the impeller couldn't process the water fast enough. And so it would literally overstuff the pump inlet and it would buck and it would it would unhook the tail end of the ski. And that was a big problem. And it was overstuffing. And then the pump itself, because it was a 155, that wasn't a 160, couldn't process all that big ton of water through the through the pump. That's why they had to bump up to a 160, and then it still wasn't enough because it, it was still reduced down to a 155, and they were cutting corners. Um, but if you can make a true 160 pump, 
with anode true 160 transom plate for an FZR processes water like a mother and you got great thrust going through it. Um, hopefully that helps. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. KG, hey, Kevin, I just taken delivery. Okay, I already answered that. Um, good. Like people who ask if you know how to do something, then question why you aren't doing it in a different way. Yeah, that's an asshole. All right. Um, I want to get a shirt that says, you know, no assholes. <laughs> Some people are not really asking for advice. They're really just wanting you to validate their purchase. Very good, Sean. That's very, very insightful. That's very true. Um, I feel like Yamaha wear ring has a tighter tolerance than Yamaha, resulting in less cavitation and better hookup. I can clearly see a bigger gap in Yamaha than C do, but I don't have a feeler gauge. Um, no, I think what you're seeing is the is the is the leading edge of the blade um, isn't it, there. There's a radius to the leading edge of the blade, and so you're able to see daylight through it. I think if you took it, I think if you took a feeler gauge and shoved it in there, you'll see the tolerances are the same. Um, oh, Jason writes, my new Solus, my new Solus Impeller has such a gap daylight shining through 2021 GPR 1800. Huh. That's no good. Um, all right. Brad writes, uh, great work as always, Kevin. The specs goggles I won a few months ago have become a staple of my riding gear. And I always get to share a cool story about them and recommend your Sunday live session. Well, thank you very much. And of course, the Sunday night, this, this session is, is really kind of a side dish to the magazine. The magazine is my bread and butter. Um, that's the magazine, you know. We just hired two new people. Ugh. Uh, all right. Steve Weeks writes, a Solus Impeller in a 2014 v VXS versus stock 2013 VXS is night and day different. The Solus shreds up the seaweed where the stock Impeller would get plugged up. <laughs> I don't think that was the intent behind the design of the Solus, but I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> All right. Uh, do, 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 okay. Answered that one. Okay. Ooh, J Hugh. Oh, I can't even. That's just a bunch of letters. Okay, he writes, "Hey Kevin, I have an RXT and flip it sometimes. How long is it okay to keep upside down in the water? Not long. <laughs> like thirty seconds, forty-five seconds. <laughs> flip it over as soon as humanly possible." <laughs> I would flip a I would flip a sea dew back right side up faster than I would flip a turtle if I found a turtle upside down. That's how fast I want you to flip that ski back over. Um, all right, Florida Dream Rides took a PC of ceiling grid wire out of eighteen inch long and put it put a really sharp hook on one end with a curved handle on the other end to pull different objects. Specifically, a shoe sole. Oh my gosh! Well, what did you use? You used ceiling grid wire. Wow! Florida Dream Rides. I want to see a picture of that. <laughs> Email me a picture of that thing. I want to see it. You got my you got my curiosity up. All right, all right. Did we get a super chat that I missed? Brad Reeman writes. Kevin, looking to buy two plastic Gunwell corner covers for my 2021 GP 1800 SVHO. What was $10 to $20 part in prior years is $350 to $355. What gives on the astronomical price? Demand. Demand. Do you know that six months ago I ordered a decal for a 2020 GP 1800R and it hasn't shown up yet? It hasn't shown up yet. 
a sticker six months for like 50 bucks hasn't shown up yet. Welcome to Thunderdome. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I missed a super chat from Kimberly. I'm, I'm Guys, I'm terrible today. What's going on? Okay. Kimberly writes, hey, Kevin, I gave my daughter my old 2018 Spark Tricks. I have taken it to the dealer twice. After you ride it a while, it beeps and says check temperature. Your thoughts are option. Well, um, the all all sparks they uh, normally a CDU will um, route its CDUs don't have an open cooling system. They have coolant like your car, and and some radiator in your car. It pumps the coolant in most CDUs through the ride plate, that big metal plate underneath the pump. Well, for the spark. They have a, a heat extractor. They don't run the water through the through the ride plate. They run it through what's called a heat extractor. And if you were to look at the bottom of your spark, there's a big plate, big metal plate, it's a long strip that runs along the side the side of the hull. And the coolant runs from one side all the way to the other. All right. And what that does is that while you're riding, the cool water is supposed to extract the heat from the uh, from the coolant running through there. Now, there's a couple things. Your coolant level might be low. Your coolant might be bad. And it might be just time to flush your cooling system like a car dealership or a car shop would flush your engine coolant. Um, I don't think your heat extractor is bad. I'd be very hard-pressed. I think it's your coolant level or the coolant itself might be bad. Um, and thermostat might be stuck because there is a thermostat, a little plunger in there. Um, those are really the three things. So I would check those out. Those would be my those would be my three choices on that one. If uh, if you have good uh, if you have a good response to that one, let me know. If you strike out, uh, also let me know. And I'll I'll try to dig around a little bit more. Okay. Uh, let's go back up to the regulars here. Uh, do, 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 do. Pete writes, sounds like the GP1800R is a hell of a rye, is, is held to live with versus an FX SVHO. You seem to be describing... Daily riding a race prepped full cage car, not fun for casual. Pete, yes, you're right. And well, I haven't driven my charger since 2018 because I grenaded the transmission and then it's been at painless wiring for over a year or a year and a half. Um, but I used to drive my fully caged 10 second Dodge Charger around way more than I should. I, I take my kids to school in it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it wears you out. It wears you out. Uh, one last question, if you have the time. The long-haul fuel contraption. In a past video, you said you can have it ordered with a fishing pole holder. Holder Didn't see the option I uh, want for a monopod. Christopher, please email me directly at kevin.shaw at Shaw Group Media, and I'll set you up with the fishing rod uh, options because we work with a partner who makes our racks and you can do that. If you are interested, Ke uh, Christopher, please email me at kevin.shaw at shawgroupmedia.com. All right. Um, and if you go to the Watercraft Journal and go to the About Us page, you'll also see my email address there and you can click that too. All right. Um, Oh, uh, thanks. Oh, this is Christopher again. Thank you. Thank you for the content. My brother is here. First time watching and thinks, and thinks you're hilarious, especially when you told me no. <laughs> Wait, you don't get told no enough? <laughs> uh, that's a problem with youth today. They, have, they haven't been told no enough. All right. Hey, Kevin, I've just taken to, oh, I already got you this one. All right. We got the high pressure one. All right, I'm, I'm trying to backtrack. That's I'm going through all these questions. 
Um, and we're already at an hour 40 minutes, so I think we're almost done here. Um, Jonathan, Ry Jonathan writes, looking at the used market, everyone seems to be asking almost MSRP or more for skis that are just a few years old. Is this typical or just because everything we've seen in the last year or so? This is not typical. This is what's happened in the last three and a half years. Demand is higher than it's ever been since probably the late 90s. I mean, honestly, demand is really, really crazy. Um, the problem is, is that supply is not meeting demand. Supply is not meeting demand. And so you're seeing major dealerships who are going around through like Facebook Marketplace and buying up used skis. Um, yeah, the, the supply is not meeting demand. And that's where we are. This is this is abnormal. Or if you're a fan of Mel Brooks and Young Frankenstein, Abby normal. Okay. Uh, I've decided... Uh, I've decided you give up on my 2021 FX and just wait on a 2022 since it's so late in the season. Do you think I should put deposits at multiple dealerships and see which one delivers first? Uh, suck an asteroid. <laughs> You guys, these names. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. I suggest not putting a deposit down on anything. Ever. Deposits do not guarantee you a ski. And we've met people here who have had their deposits literally flitted away. And they're like, my dealer won't give my deposit back. And I'm like, get a lawyer. Get your deposit back. Unless you sign a contract saying that, you know, I'm cool with losing my deposit. Putting a deposit down does not guarantee you a ski. Putting a deposit down does not guarantee you a ski. Putting a deposit down does not guarantee you a ski. Putting a deposit down does not guarantee you a ski. One more time. Putting a, a deposit down does not guarantee you a ski. Hopefully, my... Jehovah to the Old Testament Israelites repeating at nauseum has made a point. Guys, putting a deposit down does not guarantee you a ski. It thinks you, your dealer says it does. It doesn't. Because what happens if there's some stupid other thing that happens next year and all of a sudden Yamaha or c or Cowie can't deliver and all the dealerships are scrambling trying to find new units and you've put two grand down on a new ski. Well, what's going to happen is some dude's going to show up with 18 grand cash and say, hey, I just saw a brand new RXPX come off the truck. Well, yeah, but that's guaranteed to Mr. Asteroid. Well, I got 18 grand here that says it's mine. Here you go. We'll put it on your trailer. That's what's going to happen. And that's what's been happening. People have cash up front and they're buying skis like they're buying old Mustangs and Camaros. I'm not joking. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not joking. I'm trying to save people trouble. They just don't want to listen to me. <laughs> don't put money down. Don't. It's a waste. Rather, be on the lookout. Constantly. Be on the lookout. If there's dealerships near you that have social media accounts that you like, follow their social media accounts and watch them. Because they're like, hey, we got a new truck load of sea or a new truck load of Yamahas came in, or all the 2022 Cowies came in. You got your trailer hooked up to your truck and you drive there that afternoon. Cash in hand. That's how you come home with a brand new ski. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. In today's day and age, that's how you're going to do it. Don't know how else to... I just... I I, uh, I don't know how else to help you guys out. All right. Uh, do, 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 do. <laughs> okay. Okay. KG's like, I'm not an asshole. I'm, like, I'm not calling you one. Um, all right. 
Okay, Captain Awesome says, IGSBA allows for a change of impeller as long as it retains the stock diameter. That's fine. And that's, that's external diameter. I do not think it allows you for a dual impeller. All right. All righty. Uh, Tune Spark 91, no ethanol or 94 with 10% ethanol. 94 with 10% ethanol will be fine. Absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. The coatings, the, the coatings and the materials that are used in modern day engines today can happily accept 10% ethanol without, without question. They can happily take it. Doesn't okay. B BG writes, does an air intake and breather kit with ribbon delete add any noticeable performance? Oh, certainly. Oh, certainly. Yeah, you'll feel it. It's a colder, denser intake charge. Yeah, your engine will be a, your engine will thank you. Uh, yeah, most definitely. BG, totally do it. Yeah, air uh, the air ribbon and breather kit and a ribbon delete kit. Yeah. Um, in fact, we did a little video with Jerry Gaddis, and he's like, Yeah, guys are recording one to two miles an hour. So, a gain of one to two miles an hour. All right. Uh, Frederick writes, Hey, Kevin, uh, from Montreal, Canada. Uh, love your expertise in PwC and the explanation you give to people. <laughs> uh, uh, most people don't. They say I'm a condescending jerk, and that's been the that's been the theme for today is I'm a condescending jerk. So, you know, sorry. <laughs> but anyway, thank you for the compliment. Uh, I'd like to have your opinion on a 2015 FXHO pros, cons, and failures. Um, the well, I'll tell you what the FXHO. The previous FXHO uh, is a considerably drier ride. You're not going to have water coming up over the bow as much as the current 19 and up. Um, great fuel mileage. The engine has not changed. Um, I know I heard about timing chain potential timing chain problems on HOs, but it was so much less than the SVHOs that I wouldn't be concerned. Um, let's see here. What else? Guy, I really don't know of any failures. Um, I know for modifications, uh, uh, they really do benefit from a ride plate and intake rate. Uh, just as far as tracking, predictability, and chop, and just the way it rides, uh, you'll really benefit from uh, intake rate and a ride plate. Uh, otherwise, I'd leave that I'd leave that guy alone and just enjoy the heck out of it. Um, that is kind of the weapon of choice for most like long distance riders, like long haulers. They love that ski. In fact, we have a fuel system kit that adds thirteen and a half gallons that literally goes right into that ski. Um, if, if you check out the, if you check out the link at the top of this chat, you'll definitely see that. Um, and you can also go to watercraftjournal.com backslash shop, and you'll also see that auxiliary fuel system kit there. And you'll really, uh, that will do you, that will do you some good. All right. Uh, doop, doop, do Pete full intake and exhaust on SVHO, how much louder is it while cruising? You're going to hear it. It's dro It's real drone heavy. It's real droney. Uh, are we just talking Honda Civic with a fart can uh, or just a little more drone? No, it's real droney. You're not going to get that pregnant sheep sound. You're not going to get the... It's not that. Um, but you're going to get a resonation. You're going to get a... a, a, a and that's really going to grade. I mean, you're going to feel it in your ears and in your head after a while. It just really reverberates. Um, and don't ask me to make that sound again because that hurt my sinuses. All right. I got I got three more questions here, and then I'm checking out because it's almost two hours, and I'm really wiped out. <laughs> All right. Sean writes, I have a friend who's in the market for a ski. I gave him your advice about have cash in hand and be ready to drive right now. Awesome. Glad to hear it. I mean, uh, 
Dude, it, it have a round in the chamber. I'm telling you, just be ready. Okay. Hey, Kevin, I own a 2018 RX TX 300 recently was riding, and after hitting a wave, the engine made a thud noise, and performance was reduced to 40 miles per hour. Supercharger looks good. Mounts are good. Ideas. Ooh, yikes. Your mounts might be good, but your alignment might be bad. Your engine alignment might be bad. And unfortunately, what that means is you have to take the impeller, you have to take the pump out, you have to take the, the shaft out, you have to put an alignment tool on, make sure your alignment is good. Um, but that concerns me. That really concerns me. You're not making boost. Either something's holding up your impeller shaft, which could be misalignment, or you're not making boost and your supercharger is not engaging. Um, all right. How would I know if I have the wrong ride plate on my VX Cruiser? Did you put a new ride plate on your VX Cruiser? Are you talking about the transom plate? The VX Cruisers did not have a problem with transom plates. It was the GPs. We do a whole video on it, and it's very easy to watch. Um, and it gives you all the information, gives you all the part numbers, gives you everything you need. So, But you don't have a GP 1800R with the wrong transom plate. You have a VX Cruiser. So you're okay, Scott. Um, Jason McCush. Question, Kevin. Intercooler upgrade. 2021 GPR uh, Stage 1. What mile... What mile per hour top speed increase, Riva or Fizzle? Uh, the integrate the intercooler upgrade is not going to do much good if you haven't done the ribbon delete, a cold air intake, and a tune. It's not going to get. It's not going to gain you a whole lot. That's their problem. Uh. Dank Asian, I answered your question. Dude, I, I I happily answered your question. Was there a second question? Dank Asian, I answered your question. Guys, you all heard me. Uh, crap, now I'm scrolling all the way up trying to find Dank Asian's original question. Uh, I did get something, uh, pilot Buckus writes, I just got a 2021 GTX limited. How often do you recommend inspecting the wear ring and prop every time it's on the trailer? Every time it's on the trailer. If you can get down with a flashlight and look at it, it takes you 30 seconds. Do it. All right. Thank Asian. I answered your question. I promise you I did. I, I, I actually really enjoyed it. Um, but it's so far up the list. I can't tell you. You just like to say tank Asian. <laughs> I promise, dude. I, I really did. It was way back there. I said it a million. I said your name like a hundred times. Um, all right. VX SVHO, no such thing. And FX SVHO weigh the same. No, they don't. GP SVHO and FX SVHO do not weigh the same. Why, why would the VX with the Nano Excel one? There is no VX SVHO. Drone racer. There is no, there's no VX SVHO. There is no SVHO with the Nano XL one, so all every every inch of your question is incorrect. What's that really terrible? What's that line from Luke Skywalker? Everything you've said is incorrect, or everything you said there was wrong. Anyway, it's from it's from the worst Star Wars movie ever produced. In fact, I choose not to acknowledge it. Um, but moving on, 
Pilot rights. Last question. Insurance on a brand new LT. I don't even know. <laughs> I wouldn't even tell you. To me, it's not worth it. Do you recommend? What about CTO? I have a C I used to have a CTO membership, but that was when I actually raced out in the ocean. Um, I don't know where you ride, so I don't know what to tell you. Um, insurance on a brand new LTD uh, Limited is over six hundred dollars a year. Depend. I mean, I recommend riding with insurance. You can find cheaper insurance. So I don't know what to tell you. Uh, Uh, I had that. Oh, oh, this is about the. And the boot actually got blown off of the supercharger, causing it to lose all boost. Oh, okay. That's a good suggestion. That might be it. Thank you very much. All right, guys, I think we're good. I think we're good. I think we're good. Uh, do, 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 do. All right. Uh, all right, I got one more short one. Ryan writes, 2018 STX 15F impeller recommended is a 1421, but heard it actually slows you down versus the, so the stock 1319. Thoughts? Is there any other modifications that you've made to that ski? Ah, Super Chat came in. <laughs> so I, I love you guys. Every time I say I'm, every time I say I'm signing off, a Super Chat comes in like begging me to stay. <laughs> it's like the end of Shane. It's like, don't go, Shane. Come back, Shane. Come back. All right. Kelvin Hernandez writes: Honda Aquatrax F5, F12 2004 non-turbo, 35 original hour Riva impeller. Any other performer parts for offshore race, offshore rating? Um, oh boy, non-turbo. Oh, I was gonna say you could hit up Max Boost, but that's not a turbo. There was not a lot of parts for the F12 in 2004. There really isn't. Um. My goodness. Yeah, I I don't know. Yeah, I really don't know. Ugh. Yeah, you got me on that one. Kelvin, I wish I could I wish I could give you an, a better answer than I don't know, but I really don't know. <laughs> Everyone super chat Kevin to keep him until 1 a.m. <laughs> Dude, I'm going to start telling random car stories if, if that's the case. I'm just hanging out and tell hot rod stories and street racing stories from Southern California. Um, uh, Litecoin, what do you see? Okay. Um, yeah, if you want me to stick on any further, it's going to be more than $5. But anyway. Um Okay, sorry, Kevin. I know you want to go, but my problematic 2018 RXT X300 could it be needing a shaft. Well, you're talking. This is the one that's lost all the boost, right? You could have actually, um, like one of the other guys said, you you could honestly have um, disconnected the boot, and it's it's scuffing off all the all the boost. So you might want to check all your all your hoses. I mean, all your intake hoses, because maybe you're just scrubbing off your boost. Um, that's that's going to be your biggest thing. Um, if everything's connected, then I don't think you're producing boost. Um, all my hoses are good. All your hoses are connected. Now the question is. Make sure that your supercharger is producing boost. Gone through all my supercharger stuff. Okay. Dumb question. Have you done a compression test on each cylinder? I dropped a cylinder on my 2018 RXTX. Are we all being assholes, Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> Ah! <laughs> 
Hey, I got a question. I got a live audience here. All right. I got 120 people. You're watching this? You guys, go to bed. Don't you have work tomorrow? <laughs> All right. Um, what kind of – if I was to make more swag, if I was to make, like, more apparel, do, do you guys buy apparel? Do you guys buy shirts or hats, like it, like an embroidered hat? Or do you want, like um, – uh, I thought about having some gators printed, you know, like these Kawasaki gators, you know, that go around your face. Would you guys like stuff like that? Like watercraft journal gators. Um, cause we're thinking about making more apparel, but I, if, if no one's going to buy it, then it's kind of like, well, why do I want to put the money down? Um, I'm a cheap bastard. I apologize. But, uh, yeah, if you guys are interested, hoodies and hats, Okay. Someone dropped the valve. It might have dropped the valve. I'm I'm curious about your compression check. Sticker and stickers and patches. Well, we do stickers. I gotta. That was a receipt. Whoops. I'm gonna need that. Um sell life jackets. <laughs> yeah. Um can I attach pictures? I wonder if I can attach a picture because I am working with slippery wetsuits in developing our own life vest and uh, just a design. It's their shit. It's their mold, but it's, it's got our logo on it and it's a cool different, it's a different set of colors. Thanks Kevin for your help. You helped me with your journal and videos are invaluable. I hope you keep making videos for us. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Stickers, hats, shirts can't go wrong. Okay. Well, then we'll, we'll, I'll definitely do that. We'll, we'll come up with some new stickers and we'll come up with, do you guys like funny shirts? Do you just want the logo of the shirts? I, I'm literally, if I've, if I've got this many people asking questions and paying attention and what's this receipt for? Sarasota, Florida. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I know what that was. That was my Reva trip. Okay. Um, swag, swag, swag. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm all for ideas. No asshole shirt. I'll make an asshole shirt. I can do it on Teespring. It doesn't cost me anything. I'll make a no assholes. Um, that'd be pretty funny. But uh, <laughs> I got all the people say no assholes. <laughs> I'm thinking like an asshole. It says asshole like a definition with a, de you know, like a, like a, uh, okay. You'll see it. Well, I'll throw it up on the community page on, on, uh, on YouTube. And I might put it up on Instagram. All right, I'll, I'll make something. Long sleeve UV shirts. Oh, okay. Oh, I wonder if Windrider, Windrider would be when uh, might be able to help us out. Okay. Um. All right. The asshole shirt has won. I might just actually get the asshole shirt. Uh, we'll sell it cheap too. We'll do it like for like fifteen bucks or something like that. You know, like. Because our other shirts are like twenty or twenty five bucks, we'll do it. We'll do a cheap one. Um, all right, but I like Brad's suggestion for a long UV shirt. Do you guys wear long UV shirts? I, I see a lot of people on like the like Florida Ski and Carolina Ski Group, um, and they all wear jerseys. I've never worn those juvie, those jerseys before, and I know people are getting like their names and numbers on it, and it's all part of the lifestyle. It just seems really loud to me, like kind of busy, but that's me. But okay, so a lot of you guys are saying long you a long sleeve UV shirt. Uh, and I'm not going to sell riding goggles, but if we do a UV shirt with the Watercraft Journal logo on there, um, oh my gosh, should we do a long UV shirt? This is no assholes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, okay, short sleeve water shirt, uh, burn time in Florida, 10 minutes. Okay, all right, well, let me, I, I, I'm going to talk to the guys at Windrider because they make a really nice UV shirt, and um, uh, how about the Watercraft Journal, don't be an asshole. <laughs> I was thinking of just the asshole thing and then just having the logo on the back, like a, a small one, like right back there. Uh, I thought that was going to be how the shirt should be. Um, okay, so we got no ass coals, and we got uh, 
um, UV shirts. I don't think I'll make an asshole shirt UV shirt, but we'll we'll look at uh, UV shirts. Um, all right. So someone asked about rides, and then after rides, I'm done because I'm over two hours here, and I actually really need to go potty. <laughs> Got to go. Um, and I have little kids, so I say potty because I'm a... <laughs> anyway. Um, r- upcoming rides. There was a ride happening in North Carolina, I think, that I wanted to go to. But my August is a nightmare. So if you guys, um, like, honestly, here's how much of a dinosaur I am. Here's my August. I'm looking at an actual calendar. Um, next week, I'm in. I'm with Yamaha. Then on the 12th, I go to the Mopar Nationals for other magazine. And then that following week, I go out to Sea-Doo for the 2020 Sea-Doo's. And then the week of the 23rd, I think I'm spending four or five days in Fort, Fort Worth uh, to get my charger from painless wiring. So uh, my, my August is trashed. Um, but if there's a cool ride happening late August, let me know. I'd be down. I mean, that, I'm not going to drive too crazy, but, you know. I think the furthest I'd go is the panhandle. But if you guys have something going on, let me know. Uh, invite me on Facebook if you're doing an event. I'm easy to find on Facebook. Uh, but yeah, I'd be down for that. That'd be cool. Um, have you seen the photos I sent, Kevin? A couple photos. Of- oh, yeah. Hey, Fizzle. I totally saw your vet, dude. Yeah, your C7. That was rad. That thing's cool. Now I want to see under the in- I want to see the engine. No, don't show me a video of it cold starting. I want to see the engine. I want to know what you did to the Corvette. Okay. Um, I really want to do like an like a mobile. I want to ride mobile. I've never done mobile. Um, I want or or Pensacola or Pasagula. Um, I want to do Panhandle. I want to do a fun panhandle ride. I just don't know my way around it. Uh, there's a there's a couple of you good old boys who who really know your way around it. Um, so I would pretty much be a, I'd just be a follower for that ride or for that ride. Um, but if you guys, uh, hey, all right, Dank Asian bought bought a few slippery vests online. That's awesome. I'm sorry, bro. I I really I I did answer you, so I apologize. Um, Pretty Ricky can set us set you up for Pasagula. Well, let's set up a ride. Let's do a ride. I'll bring a bunch of stickers and some asshole shirts. No, I don't know. Um, but yeah, let's do it. I'm down. I don't want to do these. Oh wait, I'd be worried my trailer, my ski, all the. I'd be worried to trailer my ski all the way to Florida, 500 miles. LOL. I'd have to wrap it in bubble wrap or plastic to keep it from getting road debris. Um. I never trailer with a cover. The cover does more damage to me. I've done videos on it. My mud bug video showed the damn thing rip itself apart. So I really, um, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, if you guys have some fun rides coming up, invite me, or hit me up on Facebook. I'm on Facebook because I'm an old man. Uh, I don't like the Instagrammers. And I don't do the snappy chats and the TikTokers. <laughs> I don't do that stuff. I hire someone else to do it. Uh, if you want to do Pasagula, you can ride my 310. Let's do it. Um, all right, guys. Guys, seriously. It's two two hours and ten minutes. Um, but I do have the notes down for the UV shirt. And that's going to get a conversation going with a good sponsor of ours. And then I'm definitely going to do the no assholes because that's hilarious, um, or or the definition of an asshole, and then just have it say no assholes. Um, that's pretty funny. All right, guys, thanks again. Appreciate it. This was a lot of fun. It was super off topic. Oh my gosh, it was so off topic. Uh, but I'm really glad everyone tuned in. We got 123 likes. Um, 
If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to the magazine, uh, the YouTube channel. 124, no, 123. The One of them's down. I only got 123 here. Um, but guys, thanks again. This was a lot of fun. You guys made this one really fun. Uh, I'm going to check out and uh, I'm going to get that article ready for tonight. The Kawasaki, half of the Kawasaki lineup goes live tonight. It's the it's the unchanged half, all right? Don't get your hopes, don't get all worked up. It's the unchanged half besides colors and price. But the skis that aren't in this press release, that's what you should be excited about. That's what, you know, you look for it, all right? <laughs> Ask Cold Shirt pre-order opens tomorrow. I have to design the damn thing. And I got to be on the road to Yamaha. Um, I'll take a medium. <laughs> Um, all right, guys, thanks again. Um, this, yeah, we'll, we'll get this thing going, but there's a lot of cool stuff happening and we will, uh, get rolling really quickly on a lot of this fun stuff. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm done. Oh my goodness. Have a good night.